Hallelujah. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys today? Hopefully everybody is good today. We are here. We are ready. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Yes. I am here before midnight tonight. I know, I know, you're saying it's only a few minutes before midnight, but hey, small victories, people. We celebrate the small victories. This is a small victory, let's celebrate it together. Yes, I am here before midnight. I was uh, pushing to be here way earlier, but I had to finish my board. I had to finish my board, so I did. I finished my board, and I'm very excited about it. Um, let's see who we have on while I wait. Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. I um, am trying to get to the right place to look and see who we have on. Here we go. It is coming up. Ooh, I am Yanni. Yes, I am. It is coming up slow, but it is coming up. Um, at least I think it is. Let's see. It's been two minutes. We'll give it two more and then we'll get started. And let's see. Come on, come on. Facebook is acting crazy today. I know you're probably watching it on Facebook, but I actually record it on another program. And then I have to go to Facebook and open it up if I'm going to communicate with you guys. And tonight, I am sure that I am taping. I see myself taping, but it's acting crazy about me going to Facebook for some reason tonight. But we're going to try one more time. And then we're going to get started. What is going on? I see that I'm live. I see myself. It's strange to see yourself talking, by the way. Okay, let me try this one more way. Yay. I think I'm going to be successful this time. We will see. Come on. Okay, guys, we'll keep trying that. I'm not going to hold this up. We'll just keep trying this. But I see Toya's on. Hi, Toya. So we'll have to do it like this if it won't act right the other way. And we'll do it like this. Um, but we're going to get started. How about that, guys? We are studying the book of Exodus. And we have been reading um, the Old Testament this year. And we, our goal is to make it through the Old Testament from Genesis all the way to Malachi um, by December 31st. That's our goal. Um, and we're going to make it through. We're going to go to the end, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how difficult the reading may be to understand, we are going to do this. Um, little chunks every day, Monday through Friday. And if we need more time, we'll catch up on the weekends, right? Um, so we left off yesterday in chapter 32, which was a very good chapter, sort of, um, 
uh, brought us back to the stories that we had become so used to in Genesis and Exodus. Um, we took a break in Exodus to read about a lot of different uh, building projects that the Lord was giving Moses on Mount Sinai, right? Um, and we went back to the story form um, after chapter 31, because at the beginning of chapter 32, God told Moses, you need to go down there because your people tripping. <laughs> I love the way God said, your people that you brought out of Egypt, um, your people down there tripping, Moses, you need to go see what's going on. Um, and so, um, as we know from the reading on yesterday, when Moses got down there, they were uh, worshiping a golden calf. They were dancing and being drunk and revelry and all kinds of things. And so God had to get that straight. Um, we open up in chapter 33 with still the remnants of this, right? The, the God is still dealing with the anger that he has over this situation. Um, and so what he tells them in chapter 33, because remember, he wanted to kill him. He's like, you know what? Everybody, just, just everybody, just, you know what? I can't with none of y'all. Just kill them all. And Moses prayed. Moses prayed. When God first told him of the tragedy, Moses prayed. Before he even went down to see it for himself, we need to get into a habit like that. Somebody call you with good news before you, I mean, with bad news before you even go. See what the bad news is and see how bad the bad news is. You need to pray. That's what Moses did. God told him, your people tripping. He said, wait a minute. Let me intercede for my people right now. Um, but even in all that intercession, um, God said, okay, I'm going to kill them all, right? But he did have the Levites go through and uh, wage war on all of those that were against God. Um, so they had to wage war on their own brothers and sisters, right? Uh, whoever was against God, meaning blood, their lineage, their line, right? But listen, here in verse uh, 2 in chapter 33, God says, I will send an angel before you and drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Sounds familiar, right? Like what he told them before. He says, go up to the land flowing with milk and honey. Sounds familiar, right? Like what he told them before. Here's where the difference comes. But I will not go with you because you are a stiff-necked people and I might destroy you on the way. So God is like, yep, go do that thing that I told you to do, but I ain't going with you because I can't. Because right now I'm so mad at you that I might kill you along the way. You don't want me to go. You don't want me to go, right? But what happens? Moses prayed, right? Because the people uh, became all distraught when they heard that God wasn't going to be there. And it's funny because now all of a sudden they remember God. And they remember all of the wonderful things that God had did for them. Remember when Moses was up on that mountain talking to God, all of a sudden they forgot God and they had to create their own God. But now all of a sudden they remember God and they remember all of the great things that he has done. And now they're like, no, you've got to go with us. We can't go by ourselves. Um, and so Moses um, would, had created this tent outside all the other tents that he called the tent of meeting. So he put this tent a little ways outside the rest of the tents, and he called the tent of meetings. And that is where Moses would go and pray and talk to God. And every time he would go and pray and talk to God at the entrance of this tent would be a cloud. And so the people would know that um, Moses was in there talking to God because they would see a cloud. And so they would all stand at the openings of their tent and worship God, right? I thought this was awesome. Like while the man of God was going up to talk to God, the people of God went like, yep, mm -hmm, pray for me. And they kept watching TV. Uh-oh. The people of God went like, mm -hmm, pray for me, man of God. And they kept, you know, partying. Uh-oh. The people of God was like, pray for me, go up. Can you go up for the, to the Lord for me, right? The people of God uh, didn't say that and then continue their lives as normal and continue in their sin as normal and continue in their mess as normal. Come on. They said, you know what? Moses is in the tent of meeting, praying, 
we all need to stand at our own tents and pray. I thought that was pretty powerful. I thought it was awesome. I thought it was great. Um, and so um, if you look at verse, uh, I guess we'll start at verse 12. Moses begins to intercede again with the Lord, right? He says, uh, Moses says to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. Then the Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And so Moses says, um, if your presence does, doesn't go with us, do not send us up from here. In other words, if you're not going to be with us, God, then don't even make us go, right? It says, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? Listen, those are the memory verses that I want you to take on today. That is um, Exodus chapter 33, and we are at verses 15 through 16, and I'll read it again for you. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And so Moses is crying out and responding to the fact that the Lord said, y'all go do what I told you to do. I ain't going, right? Moses is like, whoa, if you don't go, we shouldn't be going right? Because you are our strength, Lord, right? You are our strong tower. You are our protection. You are our everything. So if you're not going, if God's not going that direction, should I be going that direction? If God's not going that way, should I be going that way, right? Because everything I need is in him. And if he's not going to be where I'm going, then I shouldn't be going there, right? And so Moses pleased with him, uh, Moses, this master intercessor. So intercessors out there, you really ought to study the life of Moses and how he prayed um, at every turn. At every turn, he called on God. And I thought that was awesome. And so Moses is talking again here and he says, um, um, I will, um, and the Lord, I'm sorry, responds to Moses in verse 17 and says, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. And so God agrees after he just told the Israelites, you know what? I ain't even going with y'all because I might kill some of y'all along the way because y'all tripping, right? Y'all tripping. I can't with y'all, right? After he just told them that, now he circles back around and after Moses intercedes and after Moses prays, he says, look, I'm going to do this for you. And God tells Moses, who he is an entreaty like a friend, I'm going to do this for you. Since this is what you want, I'm going to do this for you, right? He in no uncertain terms, he said, because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. That's why I'm going to do this. I think that that's awesome because a lot of times um, we don't understand the power that we have in prayer and that God will hear our hearts. And we need to pour out our hearts. The Bible says that he can give you, um, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And so God knows the meditations of our heart. He knows what we're thinking. And it's important that we understand that in a situation when we intercede and when we pray, we have the power um, not to change God's mind. Don't think of it like that, but to... Uh, plead for mercy from God because God is a merciful God. And so if he sees your heart is a heart of uh, mercy, he will be merciful. All right. If he sees that your heart is a heart of mercy, he will be merciful. And Moses had so much mercy 
on the people of God that were following him. God was merciful to them, but only because Moses, and he knew who Moses was. Then God calls Moses back to Mount Sinai. He says, come back here to Mount Sinai, and we are going to uh, do this again. Uh, the same tablets I gave you the first time, I'm going to give you those tablets again. And so uh, remember, um, I hope you remember, that when Moses came down off the mountain after 40 days and 40 nights of fasting, he came down to a people who had forgotten their God, who were dancing around a golden calf, calling it their God and saying it got them out of Egypt. He was so mad, he threw the tablets down. And so that's why new tablets had to be created by God, because he threw down the tablets that he had um, because he was so frustrated, right? Um, so now he's got to go do it again, <laughs> right? And so he goes back to uh, Mount Sinai, and the Lord kind of gives him a recap of what um, happened the first time. And so if you're reading this and you feel like, man, I already read this already. This is sort of just a recap, a repeat of what was going on um, on the mountain that second time. Just letting you know. The same thing that went on the mountain the first time is the same thing that went on the mountain, on on the mountain the second time, and so um, if you keep turning um, and go to chapter thirty six, you'll see this is where execution starts. Right, the plans are about to be executed. Oh, I did skip a part I wanted to talk about though. When Moses uh, came down off that mountain. He was glowing. They said his face was radiant. It was so shiny that Aaron and his sons were afraid. They sort of ran away like, whoa, your whole face is lit up, right? Um, that is how they knew he had been with the Lord. He had been in the presence of the Lord. And remember, uh, in this passage of scripture, Moses asked God, can I see your glory? And so Moses is like, I want to see your glory, God. I want to see. And God said, you can't see my face, but I'm going to pass by you and I'll let you see the back of me, right? The back of my glory. So Moses actually saw the glory of God with his own physical eyes. Um, and in doing that, when he came down off that mountain, he was glowing and the people were scared. And so he talked to the people, told the people everything that God told him. And then he put a veil on his face. Um, but then every time he would go up the mountain, um, he would come back and his face would be glowing. In my opinion, this was God's way of letting the people know that you need to respect Moses because he has a one-on-one -on -one encounter with me. Um, so that was good. In chapter 36 um, is when you actually see the plan start to be executed. He starts putting in place sort of at the end of chapter 35 toward the chapter 36. He starts putting in place everything that he got from the mountain down to the people that God chose him, uh, told him to choose. He told him uh, to uh, choose Bezalel and Oholiab. I don't know if that's the right pronunciation. I could pull it up and find out, but I want to keep going. So we're just going to call them uh, B and O, right? Or O and B. We'll call them O and B. Um, and so God had chosen O and B to do the work already. Um, and he said, even again, he reiterates here, Moses reiterates it to the people that they had already been filled with the spirit and the skill and the knowledge to be able to do this and to be able to teach it to others. And so Moses uh, just pretty much tells them everything that God had told him. And he told them to make sure that they go get skilled people who could do the work. Um, and so then the work starts, right? Um, he tells, uh, in this passage of scripture, um, the Israelites are giving according to what God said on Mount Sinai. He told Moses, tell the people to give. Tell them to give everything. These, these are the things we're going to build. And um, these are the things we're going to need for those things that we're going to build, right? And so the people started bringing stuff from their own houses that could help to build this uh, tabernacle um, in the wilderness that God was building. And so they would bring wood from their house. If they had fine linen, they would bring the fine linen from their house. If they have the fragrances that were needed to make the anointing oil, then they would bring those fragrances. So much stuff did they bring 
um, that, you know, O and B finally had to go to Moses and say, look, the people just keep bringing stuff. Well, I know where to put this stuff and it's actually not needed anymore because we have everything we need. And so listen, um, uh, I am in chapter 36 and verse 6. It says, then Moses gave an order and they sent this word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from bringing more because what they already had was more than enough to do all the work. What would that be like? What would it be like for Bishop to stand over the mic one day and said, you know what? Nobody has to bring anything today. No offering is needed because we have everything that we need to do the work, right? Um, yeah, that's how it was. The people's hearts were pricked to give and they gave and they gave and they gave and they gave. Um, the end of this is just talking more about the actual construction of the tabernacle. Um, but this is good stuff, good stuff. What you're going to read in the next few chapters are, is going to be a repeat of what God told Moses. And so God told Moses in the chapters kind of before chapter 32, how he wanted these things laid out. And then in the chapters after uh, 36, basically he's telling the people um, and the people are actually walking out the words of God and doing exactly what he said. Um, and so it's going to be some repeat and reading the rest of uh, uh, the next few chapters. Uh, we're going to go into 37, 38. Uh, we're going to be talking about the ark and the table and the lampstand and incense and the burnt offering and all of these things were things that we already talked about uh, when Moses was on Mount Sinai. But we're going to revisit it and look at different parts than we looked at the first time. Um, we're going to talk about the garments and the breastplates. And it's going to talk about um, Aaron actually trying those things on and what that must be like. Um, and then we're going to actually set up um, the tabernacle. All right. Uh, believe it or not, we're coming to the end. I know you guys are like, what? But believe it or not, we're coming to the end of Exodus. So tomorrow will be the end of Exodus, um, and it's going to end gloriously, gloriously. Um, so um, you, while you're reading tomorrow's reading, because definitely you're going to read, while you're reading tomorrow's reading, um, make sure just to always try to put yourself there, put yourself in the context, uh, feel like what it must have been to be a part of that giving experience, feel like what it must have felt like to actually be there helping to build. Um, and then we're going to come upon the end of this and go into Leviticus, which is uh, going to be challenging in its own, but we're going to get through it. I promise you we will. Um, and we're going to talk about some very deep things in Leviticus. So uh, you might want to read earlier up in the day, not so close to your bedtime. I'll try to do uh, the live stream a little earlier up in the day uh, for Leviticus so that we'll all make it through together, okay? There are some um, exciting parts in Leviticus, but most of it is laws, 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 and guess what? More laws. So get prepared for that. Uh, but the way we're reading, it's going to go fast. I'm telling you, we'll only be in Leviticus like um, for like, two weeks. So it's going to go fast. I promise you. Uh, so hang on. Uh, but until next time, you guys be blessed. Remember that God loves you and I love you too. In Jesus name. Amen.